YouTube, it's Michael here, and a happy belated new year to everyone out there. I hope that the um, new year, a new decade, 2020, goes well for everyone, and I'm excited for this year to be sharing lots more new videos. Now, over two months ago, November last year, I've got myself the new Yamaha PSR SX900 keyboard. Now, the um, PSR SX900 was first launched on the 1st of August 2019. We didn't get our display model until September, and some stock of the SX900 didn't come until October, and then November, there was a massive stock of PSR SX900s came in, and that was the time when I got my one. So yes, I've got my PSR SX900 on the 18th of November last year. So I've had mine for a little over two months now, and I am really enjoying it so far. Now the SX900 is an absolutely fantastic keyboard. Um, it's basically a compact or mini Genos, which is, it's also known as. You see, we, we, you do get some sounds and styles from the Genos on this keyboard. And I must say, for what this keyboard is, I don't think, I don't think it is far of it being of the same level of sound quality as the Genos. You know, it, it sounds that fantastic. Obviously the Genos will be, you know, it's a, a much better keyboard, but the SX900 is not far from being of the same level of sound quality. And for the price and for what it is, um, I absolutely love it. It's got the same operating system as the Genos. As you can see, it's got the touch screen here. Um, the touch screen is not as big as the Genos, but it's of the same operating system. So yes, I'm, I'm really used to it because I own a Genos. So yes, um, on this video, I'll be doing a tutorial of the Yamaha PSR SX900 keyboard. Um, I won't be showing everything like I did um, I won't be showing everything of the um, like SX900 because what you can do on the SX900 you can do on the Genos but I'll be showing most things even if I did show it on my Genos tutorial I'll be showing like the, the more important stuff that you need to know on the PSR SX900 this will also help owners of the PSR SX700 as well now before I do a tutorial of this keyboard here is a quick unboxing video of myself unboxing the SX900 on the day I bought it. Here we have the owner's manual. The mains adapter. And there's the um, music rest, which will be handy for my iPad when connecting um, these, this keyboard um, via Bluetooth. And there you have it, the new Yamaha PSR SX900 keyboard. 
a great addition to my Genos because this is basically a mini Genos. Okay, so that was a, a quick unboxing video of myself unboxing my um, PSR SX900 keyboard. Uh, yes, I was, I was very excited about taking it home that day. And when I got it out of the box, um, yeah, I've been playing it for a few hours and had lots of fun on it. So right now, I'm going to go through with you a tutorial of the Yamaha PSR SX900 keyboard so you can get to know the PSI SX900 um, if you've got one yourself or you're thinking about getting one and this will also help people that have a PSI SX700 as well thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoy okay so the first thing that I want to show you of this tutorial of the Yamaha PSI SX900 keyboard and that's um just the overlay of the keyboard itself. Um, yes, the SX900 is basically a compact or mini Genos, as I said on my um, introduction of this video. And as you can see, we have um, a touchscreen exactly the same as the Genos, um, because it's of the same operating system as the Genos. Um, but this is the first mid-range keyboard by Yamaha to have the touchscreen as well as the PSR SX700 so some things on this tutorial will help um, owners of the PSR SX700 as well um, just a few things um, of the PSR SX900 um, there are some features in which Genos didn't have um, and one of them is the cord looper but with the with the new firmware of the Genos Genos now has Cord Looper with um, the new version 2.0, which was released November last year for the Genos. So Genos now has the Cord Looper. But back when it was launched, Genos didn't have Cord Looper. So, yep, yeah, I'll be showing Cord Looper. And also, for the first time on the Yamaha mid range keyboard, we can now layer up to three voices for your right hand which is um, really handy, well, especially handy for me. And um, this keyboard also has Bluetooth connectivity, which I will show you later on of this tutorial. And here we have the, the menu, which is exactly the same as the Genos. You can go through the menu in three ways. You can just, because there's um, two pages with the menu. Whoops. Yep, there's two pages with the menu. And we can either press the menu button here and it will flip through menu one and menu two pages. Or we could just press them like so. Or we could just flip them. Like an iPad. And also on this keyboard you have um, little blue LED lights on the buttons. Which, um, which I kind of think is better than the green buttons. Um, so we go... And then here we have the... Um, just like on the Genos you can... Um, you can brighten these lights as well, or you can make them dim. So let's just say that you're in a you're in a dark room. We can actually turn that up to its max. Notice how the night notice the the lights get brighter. Oops. We can just do that. Yes, yeah, so if you notice, the lights get brighter. And when it goes to number one, the lights are at their darkest. So let's just put that back to two. So yeah, that's just a, a little overlay of the keyboard. Um, unlike the Genos, um, yes, um, you have the style and voice categories, um, but they have buttons because on on the Genos you didn't have um, you didn't have buttons for the sounds and style categories. So you can flip through the different categories of styles. And voices using these buttons and just like on the Genos you can also touch and um, use the touch screen to, to flip through categories and the same thing goes to the voices we have the categories of voices um, also we can use the touch screen to flip through categories on the Genos the um, touch screen was the only way to flip through categories of 
sounds and styles. But on the SX900, we have the voice and style category buttons, as well as flipping through categories with the touchscreen. So yeah, that's just a, a quick overlay of the keyboard. It looks exactly like a Genos, except um, it doesn't have 76 keys, I'm afraid. And it's got built-in speakers and it has the same screen slash operating system. Although this, the screen is smaller than the Genos, but for what it is, it's an absolutely fantastic keyboard. So that is the overlay of the PSR SX900. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is the favorites and search features. So first of all, we'll start with the voices. There are literally hundreds of voices here on the PSR SX900, and sometimes it's hard to find that pre um, precise sound that you're looking for. Um, so if you if there um, if there's a sound that you have been trying to find but you don't want to like forget where where it is, um, what what you can do is that you can favorite that sound, and in order to do that, you hold down whatever sound you want to choose. So let's just say rock piano for example, and then you you hold it you hold the um, voice down of the screen, and then you can see that little um, let's see there you go. Hopefully you can see it. Oops, let's just go back to the piano. That's it. And if you can see on the screen, there's that um, little orange bar on the left. And um, that sound has been favorited. Um, let's do some more categories. So that's the rock piano. Oh, no, sorry, that's the upright. Um, um, let's go through some other ones. So let's just say, take this organ sound. You just hold down the voice, and that voice has been favorited. We'll choose some more in this category. Um, let's find another sound. Let's just take this one for instance. We'd... We want to favorite that, so we just hold down that, and that sound has now been favorited. So any sounds that you want um, easy access to, you hold it down, the sound is favorited. You hold it down, again, the sound is favorited. So we're just gonna do a few examples and some synth stuff as well. And let's just do some more. Let's um, take this marimba and this 80s pop kit. And as you favorited those sounds, there's a little star icon on the top of the screen there. And that's where your favorites are. We just go there. And all the sounds that you have favorited will be in that page. And in order to unfav unfavorite the sound, all you do is hold down the voice either in there located categories or in the favorite section. So there you go, there's I've unfavorited three sounds. We just go out of that and then come back to it and there you go. Those sounds aren't there now because I've unfavorited them. So that's the favorite section and you can do the same thing with the styles as well. We just favorite a style. There's nothing on there because nothing's been favorited. So we just take this one for example and then say this one and that one. We'll do some more. That's been favorited. Oops, sorry, there we go. So those styles that I've done have been favorited. We go to the favorite section and there you go. The styles that I favorited are now in the favorites page. Again, in order to unfavorite styles, just the same way as the voices, you hold it down in either the favorites page or in their categories that they're in. 
as I've done it on the favourites. Uh, we just go back to that and go back to the favourites. And then as you can see, the stars are not there because I've unfavorited them. So that's the um, favourites feature. I mean, it's a good thing to have because there are literally hundreds of sounds and styles on the SX900. And another quickie, um, I believe you can also do the... Oh, no, sorry. I I thought that you could do the same thing with the multipads, but I guess not. Never mind. Another thing that I want to show you now is the search feature. So you just go to the voices again. Let's just get out the favourites. There we go. Let's go back to the piano category. Or any category for that matter. Um... And there's a little, there's a search icon just slightly on the um, top right of the screen. Now, if there's a sound that you want to find, like whether it's a piano, organ, synth, strings or anything like that. But there's a sound that you're trying to find, but can't because there's just so many sounds. You just search the sound that you're looking for. So let's just say if we take, say, strings, for example. Then press OK. And then any of the sounds that have like the name strings on it will be added to the search. It says on here the number of search results have exceeded the limit because there's only a certain amount that you can search. I figured that, there you go, up to 100 sounds or styles can be searched within the name search. So, okay, we'll just cancel that and go back to search. Oh, no, it's still on there. Uh, let's just clear that. And let's just say, um, let's take, let's take brass, for example. And then any sound with the name brass will come up on the search menu. Again, so many sounds with the brass, like it could be anything like it could be anything like the, the sounds which are in the brass category, or sounds with the name brass, like golden trumpet. Though that's not called brass, but it's in the brass category. Or and any synth sounds that are synth brass. And one more example. Um, let's just think of a, a different name that's not within those categories. Um, let's take, say, trance, for example. There you go, trance. Okay. And then any sound with the name trance will be added. Then we have bright pad trance, trance, trance artist, trance bass, trance lead, and so on. And then let's go to the styles. We can do the same thing with the styles as well. So if there's a style you're looking for, we just press the search button. Uh, we can type in anything like the category of the style itself. So let's say pop. We press OK. And then we have any styles that are in the pop category. Or has the name pop on it. Will be added to the search. But there you go. 80s classic rock. Well, that, that's not pop, but it's in the pop and rock category. So, okay, let's just take an, another one, for example. We shall take, what shall we, um, instead of typing in a category like R&B, Jazz, Latin, um, let's just take, a, say, a name. So how about party, for instance? Okay. Then any style that has the word party on it will be added to the search. Here we have Latin party pop, Mallorca party, party anthem, party arena. So any styles with the name party will be added. 
Okay, um, so now I'm just going to do one more example with the favourite section. Um, let's just do another one. For example, um, let's just type in cool. There you go, cool. Okay, and then we have styles with the word cool in it added. So we got 70s cool ballad, cool 8-beat, cool bossa, cool R&B, cool swing, etc. So that's how you search for sounds and styles that you are struggling to find. So there you have it. That is the favourite section in which you can favourite your sounds and styles that you really like or you're trying to find. And the search feature in which you can use some um, words and categories to search for sounds and styles you're looking for. OK, so now the next thing that I want to show you is the assignable buttons. So there are all together, there's six assignable buttons here. And there's one assignable button here and another assignable button here, which at default is the rotary um, button for organ sounds. So as you can see here, it says rotary SP slash assignable. Now, as you can see, I'm on the piano sound. So if I press that button here, because it's, this, because it's set to rotary, it will say on here, on the screen, disabled. Reason for that, because I'm not on an organ sound. So now I go into an organ sound. We can now use this button, which changes the rotary from slow to fast. So here's the normal, slow, and now fast. But we can also do that with the um, joystick here, the pitch bend slash modulation joystick. Um, joystick, sorry. And as you can see, the as you can see, the the button flashes. Well, the button turns red when I do that. But now we we, we just turn that off. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. But, um. So we um. <laughs> So yeah, that's the um, rotary SP slash assignable by default. But you can assign it to whatever you want, really, along with these six buttons. So now I'm going to show that to you. OK, so yes, here are the six assignable buttons here. Each button has something assigned to it by default. So button A is the half bar filling for styles, which you can turn on and off. And then we have um, B, which is fade in and out for the styles. So, yeah, so as you can hear, as you can see, I'm, I'm playing the keys. But when I press, a, when I go and turn on a style and put, put it on standby, and then, fade out again. So yeah, assignable, assignable button B is fade in out by default. Assignable button C is the metronome. You can turn the metronome on and off. Assignable button D, it takes you to the um, score page. Like if you was um, playing MIDI files or if you was like writing your own songs. Assignable button E by default is um, new song lyrics. And assignable button F is registration bank info. So those are the um, defaults of these assignable buttons. But you can change them to your, your own assignable buttons. So for example, I'll just type it, I'll just press direct access in any one of these six buttons. And here is the assignable menu in which you can assign these buttons to different settings. So yeah, we have the rotary SP assignable here, 
which is the organ rotary slow slash fast. But we can actually change that. Like we can change the, there you go, like you can change it into a say an articulation one or articulation two. So let's just take articulation one, for instance. And then we're going to choose a super articulation guitar sound. So I'll press the rotary SP assignable button. You get the body tap of the guitar. At the moment where the video is, you may not be able to, you won't be able to see my um, finger press the button, but that's what I'm doing with the um, button that is the rotary SP slash assignable. So it's a good thing that you can do that because on unlike the Genos, well just like the Genos, the um, SX900 doesn't have the Art1, Art2 and Art3 buttons. So it kind of works out the same way really, except you just got that one button. So let's just go back to the menu, there we go, let's just put that back to its defaults. Yeah, that's it. You, you just hold these down to get the, the default assignable setting. Now, for this example, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use these six buttons and assign different things for every button. So we have half bar filling. So let's just show you that quickly. Half bar filling, which basically um sort of halves the um filling of the style. So let me just show you. So instead of four beats for the um, filling, you only get two, hence the name half bar filling. So with these assignable buttons, I am going to change, I'm going to change um, each of these buttons into my own, my own setting. So, so Felix, for example, we, we can do like shortcuts, voices, registration, live control, chord looper, style, and many more things. So for the assignable button A, I'm just going to just go to select mixer. Now that's assigned as the mixer. Um, so it just takes you straight to the mixing menu. Um, assignable button B, which is fade in out. Yeah, you can also change like how long it will take to fade in and out as well. And then for this one, we are going to go to, let's do another shortcut. So let's say lyrics, for example. Now for default for assignable C is metronome. We're going to change that. Maybe change it into, say, let's say multi-pad one, for example. So when I press it, it's actually the equivalent to if I was to press one of the multi-pad buttons. So right now, I'm going to press multi-pad button one. And assignable button C will be the same way of doing it. But that's only one multipad button. Oh, sorry, um, I, no I just noticed that assignable button E is lyrics. So I'm going to change that and change it into another shortcut. Let's say vocal harmony. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to assignable button D. Uh, we're going to say, let's, um, ending free, for example. And E is by default lyrics. Um, we're going to select it as channel on off. And then finally, F, we have 
registration bank info by default. Um, let's just do, say, um, instead of doing a shortcut, let's just do something else. Let's do, let's do mono slash poly, which changes the um, voices from polyphony to monophonic. So now that I've got these set up, so assignable button A is the mixer, B is vocal harmony, C is multi-pad button number one. So it works exactly the same way as if I was to press button one on the multi-pad control. Assignable button D is ending free of the style. So, um, so I'm just gonna play a style real I'm just gonna play a style real quick. And then D will be the ending. Which will be exactly the same way as if I was to press this button here, ending free. Assignable button E has been changed to the channel where you can turn parts on and off with the style. And finally, F is where you can change the voices from polyphony to monophonic. Now for this example, I'm going to select a synth sound. So this is, this is a, um, let's do it again. And um, let's just do another sound. So that's polyphonic. And then we press this assignable button here and now it's monophonic. Let's do another sound. Not that one. Um, there we go. Oh. So yeah, these are the, um, the six assignable buttons in which you can assign just about anything you want, really, when it comes to controls. Um, there is another assign button here for the um, live control knobs here, um, which is what I'm going to be showing you next. And we have that assign, so um, by default with the live control knobs, we have um, number one is filter and reverb, two is equalizer low and high gain, and three is style re-trigger, on, off and rate. Um, so yes, right now I'm going to be showing you what you can do with the real-time control knob assign buttons. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the... Um, real-time control knob assign button. So by default, uh, we have um, three different settings for the assignable button for the live control. Um, we have number one, which is by default, which is the filter and reverb. And we just reset that. Um, oh, sorry. We reset that. And then number two, we have the equalizer low and high gain. Reset those to its defaults. And finally, number three, we have the um, style re-trigger on and off rate. But as you can see, nothing's come up on there because a style is not being played at the moment. Um, and we have style track mute A, which is actually quite handy. So I'm gonna show you that quickly. So we're gonna turn that right down. So all you're getting is the drums. And as you turn the knob up like so, then you get extra sounds added. Oh. And then we've got the bass, piano, guitar, and then synths and pads, and so on. So that's a pretty neat feature. That's, um, that feature is also on the Genos as well. Um, but on the SX900, you don't get as many real-time control knobs as you do on the Genos. You only have two on the SX900. On the Genos, you have six 
including a, an extra little screen in which you can control the volumes and such with the um, control knobs as well. As um, So yeah, now we're going to um, do the style re-trigger on and off and rate. So I'll show it to you. So... So that's the style retrigger and style track mute. But with this assign button, we just press direct access to get easy access. Just go back, this goes um takes us to the um live control menu. And here we have the, the three different settings, but we can assign it to whatever we want. So knob one is default, yeah, number one here. There we go. Um, the default is filter and reverb. So we're going to change that. We are going to, let's see. Um, let's, let's try voice setting. I wonder what that's going to be like. Oh, cool. It, it basically tunes the sound. So we're going to keep that one and then Knob 2 is reverb by default. And um, we're going to. Let's do. <laughs> you could select it to no assign, but there'll be nothing, as you can see. So let's just get out of that. And. Let's do the, yeah, let's select that as pan. So, hopefully you can um, pick up the audio. Um, but when the pan is up to R63, then the sound is coming from the right speaker. Let's put it to L63. It's coming from the left-hand side. And now it's in center. And now it's the right hand. Left, right, left, center. And now we're going to do this one, two, which is equalizer low and high gain by default. Uh, we're going to, let's see. Yeah, so there's not as many choices as these buttons here. So let's say chorus. So we should have like a chorus effect. Let's try and find a sound that you can really recognize the chorus. So let's say no chorus, chorus. Okay, so let's go back to that, um, and we're going to cut off and resonance. So that's number two um, being assigned something different, and now number three, which is originally style retrigger and style track, um, we're going to mixer. Keyboard volume and for the last one um, We're gonna go to um, Let's try modulation plus so now we got our settings assigned So let's reset them Let's just put that down. There we go. 
So now we've assigned everything for we signed we have assigned something to these buttons and the um, real time control knobs. And earlier I've also done the Rotary SP assignable button, which is now back in its defaults. So we got mixer, standard harmony, multipad one, ending three. Watch this button as it press as it turns orange when I press the assignable D button. There you go. And then E is the channel on off. F is the um, switching between polyphony and monophonic. And as this assign, I have assigned um, for tuning. Oh, where's the sound gone? Sorry. Oh, where's the sound? Where did that go? Um, Oh, because um, the keyboard volume was turned down, that's <laughs> my bad. So number one, we have the tuning. And pan pot for the second, for... And number two, we have the chorus. Resonance and cutoff. And finally, Number three, we have the keyboard volume for knob number one. And knob number two is modulation plus. So there you have it. And that is how, and that is the um, assignable buttons. There are eight assignable buttons altogether. And that is how you can assign them into your own settings. Uh, just one more thing. In order to get them into the default, you know, having their default settings, you just hold these down and they're back to the default factory settings. And the same thing goes to this. We just put these back to defaults. So, yeah, there you have it. And that is how you can change the assignable buttons to any of your own settings that you want as well as the um, assign assignable button for the um, real-time control knobs too. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you, which is a little bit similar to the assignable button feature that I showed you, and that is these um, home shortcuts here. Um, we have the voice part, chord looper, live control, assignable, channel, demo. Um, so there's the voice part chord looper, live control, which I've already shown, assignable, again, I've shown that, channel on off, um, but you can also change those home shortcuts to other, th other settings as well. So in order to do that, you just go to the assignable menu again, just like I showed you with the assignable buttons, and we go in to go to home shortcuts on top here. So we're going to we're going to um, change those. So maybe have this one as, say, we're going to flip some of them over. So there's channel on off, or maybe we want to go um, chord looper and change that into, say, mixer. And home shortcut number three is live control. We're going to change that into, let's say, metronome, assignable, home shortcut number four, um, say, style creator, and this one here is channel on off, um, maybe have that as, um, let's see, song recording, and finally we have the demo shortcut and let's just say master tune so now the home shortcuts will be different now we've got the channel on off mixer metronome style creator song recording and master tune those home shortcuts have now been changed to my own settings 
So we have the channel on off, mixer, metronome, in which we can also change the time signature. So yeah, let me just show you that real quick with the metronome. So we have the metronome, um, the bell sound. So we turn that on. So now that, that now that the bell sound is on, we can also change the um, time signature. Or So those are the different time signatures you can change with the metronome. Just put that to, put that to uh, default. There we go. So I thought I'd show you that, the um, metronome feature. And now we have the style creator, which takes us straight to the, like if you want to create your own styles. I will be showing this later on in this video. And then we have song recording. Again, I'll be showing you this later on in this video. And then finally, we have the master tune, which takes us to the master tune. So we just press that, and that takes us straight to the default tuning. So there you have it. That's how you can change um, home shortcuts to any of your own settings to get easy access again just like the uh, assignable buttons here you just hold these that's it you hold these to get their default factory settings so there you have it and that is how you can change the home shortcuts into different settings that you choose. Okay, so here's the next thing that I want to show you. Um, I've also showed this on the Genos as well, but I thought I'd show you this one as a, a quick one. And that is um, being able to play Mega Voices live. Now on previous Tyros keyboards, you couldn't play Mega Voices live. Um, they were restricted like um, for style backings in like the the style channel so like for example here we have them um, called we have the mega voice steel guitar for that channel of the style so in order to play mega voices live we just go to the harmony section so just press direct access which gives us easy access to the harmony menu and then we're going to yeah we have all sorts of different harmonies and that and arpeggiators which um another thing i want to show you actually um arpeggiators so we're just going to go straight down to, yeah, basically, it, um, being able to play Mega Voices live, it's the same as um, the um, arpeggiators. So now we've got our, oh, I should have selected a sound first, um, so we're going to do that. So we select to Mega Voice, um, acoustic guitar, and let's just say... Um, steel acoustic pick now as you can see it has like different notes depending on the velocity you play it which is pretty impossible to play live but if you press the harmony and go to the different and then now the arpeggiate the mega guitar arpeggiators is now turned on. We can now play it live. And we have all sorts of different arpeggiators. So you're hearing a mega voice being played live.
Okay, um, let's do another example. Um, this time we're going to do electric guitar, say clean guitar for example. No, actually solid guitar, number two. Go back to the harmony menu and we're going to select on the arpeggiator mega guitar and here we go. So yeah, with the um, mega guitar, mega voices can be played live, but I don't know if it will be the same with other different mega voices, other than like the you know like the string sounds, the brass sounds, the um, vocals, mega voices. Um, as you can see, the category of arpeggio is mega guitar, so any of the mega voice guitars can be played live like that. But I don't think it will really work well for the. Um, mega voice strings or mega voice choir for example so that's the um, arpeggio mega guitar in which you can play mega voices live so yeah on top of like like our harmonies and echoes you have um, we have like arpeggiators as well just like on the genos um, I'm not sure exactly how many arpeggiator types there are on this keyboard um, but yeah there are there are lots so we're going to do a synth sound, for example, because arpeggios with synth voices, to me, you know, would be more better. But you can do things like pianos or um, electric piano, for example, and guitar, as you heard. So let's just select a sound. There we go. Let's do this one. So there you have it, and that is um, the arpeggio mega guitar in which you can play mega voices live, um, but um, but only on the guitar sounds, that is, as far as I know, and the um, different arpeggiator types as well for other voices. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you, as I said earlier on, um, this keyboard doesn't have a secondary screen like the genus does so that you can change like the um volumes of like certain parts of styles or your voices and that it's basically like the main thing where you can like mix the volume and do other things as well but on this keyboard um you don't yeah as i said you don't you don't get the um screen here like you do with the genus and so in order to go to the there you go you just press mixer equalizer and this is where you can turn down the volumes of the voices and the styles um, but as I showed earlier if you had mixer on the home shortcut you can gain easy access to that like that as well so we just go to mixer equalizer and you go to pan volume and here you go here's the volume of the style so this is where you can change the volume
So yeah, this is where you can change um, the volume for the styles and voices. So let's just press these. Oh, hang on. That's it. Just putting them back to default. You just hold down the number. That's it. Uh, the same thing goes to... Yeah, if I can find the... Um... Yeah, I'm just trying to find the um... voice menu. So pan volume. It's just... There we go, and um, panel. So there's the voice, so we can change the volume of this. Or you can change the multi-pad. There we go, I've got the multi-pad on. You can change the volume of that as well. Using this on board mixer here. And you can also change the style as well. This is the style's volume. The, the main volume of the style. And we just press that number here. There we go. Get the default. So that's the way to turn up and down the volume of the sounds and styles or multipads, etc. on the SX900. Because on the Genos, you have the secondary screen here in which you can do all of that. But you can also do it on the mixer with the Genos as well. So. A, another thing with the mixer where we can like change um this is where we can also change like um our chorus effects and reverb effects so this is where we can change um the sounds of the reverb so yeah so um and the same thing goes to re um the chorus so and here we can change the um, chorus type as well. So yeah, there's, there's there's just literally loads of um, different reverb and chorus types. So yeah, the reverb and chorus here on the mixer. This is where you can change the um, reverb and chorus, like sort of um, volume or density. Um, so yeah, um, this is where you change the types as well. And here we have the the, the effects like insertion effects, which is um, delay. Let's just turn off the arpeggio, that's it. And the variation effect as well. And this is where we can change like equalizers. Not just for the, not just for like the voices. You have like the um, right voice one two three left multi pad and style MIDI file, audio, and here we have the filter, which is like resonance and cutoff. Um, but you can easily do that within these two real time control knobs, which I showed you earlier. So let's just do that quickly anyway. You can do the same thing with the, um, yeah, you can change like the effects of the styles. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Style, yeah, there you go. Yep, 
effects. So you can do like this different settings with the mixer, with the panel, style, multi-pad, song and master, with the filter, equalizer, effect, chorus, slash reverb, pan, slash volume. So there you have it. And that's how you get to the mixer of this keyboard to change like the sounds, effects, and um, turning up and down the volumes of the style parts and the main sounds as well. So I'll show that quickly one more time. Let's go to volume there. You can change the volumes of the panel style. Yeah, the panel voices style and change that reverb and chorus types of sounds and styles and songs. So yeah. So that is the mixer. That's how you get access to the mixer in which you can change volumes and change effects. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you, and that is how to create and store registration memories. Now on the PSI SX900 and 700, you have eight registration memory buttons. So you can save up to eight settings for each registration memory bank. On the Genos, you had 10 registration memory buttons. So yeah, I wish this keyboard did have 10 registration memory buttons, then at least that way you can save more settings in one bank. So yes, I will show that to you. So what we do is that we change our sounds and styles that we want to um, set. So for this instance, I'm gonna stick with the concert grand and strings here, but I'm going to change the, yeah, so there's the pad and the piano sound, sorry, the strings and the piano sound. But on the right free, I want to change that into a pad sound. So take this one, for example. So now we've got three sounds. And then we want to select a style. So we choose this one, for example. Turn your uh, complement on. And for this, we are going to select variation C. put the sync start on. Once you're happy with your setting, you press the memory button and what any one of the eight buttons and that setting has been stored for you. But we want to add some more to our registration. So another example, we can, to make things easier, we can select one of the one touch settings. So for this one, and we're going to select variation D. Again, once you're happy with your settings, press the memory button and any one of these eight buttons. Um, it doesn't just save like sounds and styles, it also saves um, like whatever multi-pad you choose. And if you tick the assignable button icon here, then it will, it will also save anything you've changed within the assignable buttons. So now we got two registration memories saved with this sound and this sounds. So that's what we've got so far. And we can also choose, let's say, another sort of one touch setting. So we choose this one. I've just turned the right voice free on, which is some sort of accordion sound. And we're going to select variation B. Once you're happy with everything, press memory, any one of the eight buttons and your settings has been saved. Now we're going to go through something else. We're going to go back to variation D, but this time we're going to select a different sound, not from the one touch settings. So we're going to select, say, let's see. We choose that guitar sound. And what if you want to change your DSP effects? So go to voice part to do that press that icon and this is where we can change different DSP effects so let's say that I want to have a 
Let's see what effect, effects we get. So maybe if we want a uh, sort of a flanger. Or maybe something else. Let's go to Legacy. This, these are like the um, DSP effects from keyboards over the years. And I'm just going to try and find a wah effect. Just going to go through all of these until I find the effects that I want. For this example, I want to try and find a wah effect. There we go. So that's the um, DSP effect of that sound changed. And I've selected variation D. So once you're happy with everything, press memory, one of the eight buttons, and there we go. That's our setting saved. So we got this, 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 and this. So we play the style. There we go. So that's, that is how you um, create and store your registration memories. Now before you go any further, um, we are going to save that registration memory. So I know there's a registration memory of mine, but we, that's okay because um, we just go to file and go to save and give it a different name. Hold down to, to, hold down to um, delete so that the um, it's completely empty for you to rename it something else. So I'm going to call this registration memory example because this is an example on how you can create and store your registration memories. So there we go, okay. And then that's our registration memory saved. So that is how you create and store registration memories. And another thing that I want to show, um, with the registration memory, the sounds that I've um, done, <clears throat> is that you can also sa save um, not only on the registration memories, but you can also save them as your own one-touch settings as well. But with the one-touch setting, as as the preset one-touch settings has been changed to your own settings, you will have to um, save the style into the user section of the keyboard. So I'll show that to you. So we're going to select, yeah, let's just select this one. For this style, and we just press the memory button, and instead of pressing one of the eight registration memory buttons, press one of the four one touch setting buttons. So we're going to select one touch setting button number one. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to show you what it is. So this is it, this is it by default, and then we've got this one. We press memory number one and that's been saved and it also it gives you a notice on the keyboard one touch setting data has been changed if you select another style without executing the save operation the data you changed will be lost and it's telling you if you want to save uh, we won't save now because we're going to do some more um, so we're going to do one touch one touch setting number three which is originally this we're going to select this one and we're going to save that to number three. So now that we got the one touch settings changed that we want, we're going to save that style. So we're going to say yes, and we are going to save that style here. Um, I'm also going to rename that style. Um, the original style name is called US Folk Pop, but I'm going to change it into US Folk Pop Pop um, OST OTS change one touch setting change. Again, as an example, 
on how you can change the preset one touch settings into your own settings. So let me just show you that real quick. So this is the one touch settings of the original style. And this is the one touch settings of the same style, but has been changed. So I've changed number one and three. So here's one. That remains the same. And here's a different one. And number four remains the same. So there you have it. And that is how you create and store your registration memories to save your settings. And that is also how you can also change the preset one touch settings into your own settings. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you in relation to the registration memories, and that is the registration sequence in which you can use a foot pedal to toggle between these buttons. So I will show that to you. So sometimes you might find it hard when you're in the middle of playing a song and you don't have time to immediately press all these buttons at once, like. Well, you can also use your foot to use the foot pedal to toggle between the eight registration memory buttons. So I'm gonna show that to you. You can also do this in the Genos and even the Tyros keyboards as well. So we just go to my registration. We're gonna to go to menu, see, um, registration sequence. And this is where we can change these sequence sequences to our pedal. So I'm just gonna delete all of them and start a new. And also I'm going to be copying some registration. So I'm gonna copy that one over there, this one over there, so that we got all eight buttons lit up. There we go. And now we can do our sequence with the pedal for each for each bank of registration memory, you can have up to 30 different sequences within the um, pedal. So for this example, I'm going to press number one. We're going to press insert, then three. We press insert, then two. Insert and say five. Insert three again. Insert, seven, insert, six, and yeah, just, you just keep um, adding to your sequence. So we're gonna do some more. So yeah, you can have up to 30, but I'm not gonna do them all. I'm gonna at least do half. So, so that's our that's going to be our sequence. So, in the order we've done one, three, two, five, three, seven, six, eight, two, four, two, six, one, four, two, five. In that order, and then once you're happy with everything, your your sequence. Um, we just go to, we're going to save that, which is basically our registration bank. We're going to save that. And there you go. That's our registration sequence saved. So what we're going to do now, just watch, watch this. Um, we've got the foot pedal here and I'm not pressing any of the buttons, but the buttons will change as I press the pedal. Notice there. And it's doing it by the order of the sequence. So yeah, so pretty straightforward stuff. So let me just show you an example. So, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm playing, that's it, you go, uh, when, when it's at the end of its sequence, you have to go to another registration and then go back and that resets the sequence. So I will be playing whilst pressing the foot pedal with my foot to toggle 
these buttons. So there you have it, and that is how you make a registration memory sequence um, by um, going to the registration sequence and you can have a sequence data in which you can use using your foot pedal. So let me just show you that one more time. Uh, I'll just change another one, there we go. And then if you can see on the top part of the screen, you can see the numbers change in the sequence. And it does it in the order of the sequence that I am um, set, set to it. So yes, again, that is how you make a registration sequence in which you can toggle between the eight registration memory buttons using a foot pedal. Okay, so now here's something quick that I want to show you. And this is something that the Genos didn't feature when it was first launched. And that is the style reset. Okay, so this button is tap tempo. So you can like change the tempo with the styles depending on how fast or slow you do it. So like... Or... Yeah, that's it. Um, you got it really fast and slow, or bit or slow. We'll put that. So that's the um, tap tempo when the style's not being played, but when the style is being played, it will act as a tempo reset. So I'll show it to you. So basically, the style resets itself. So it acts like that when the style's being played, and it acts like the te tap tempo when the style isn't being played. I know that the style reset has been featured on, like, say, like, Korg, for example. They've been doing it since the 90s, I believe. But I think this, this is something new to Yamaha, but I know, it's, I know it's not new technology. It's something that Korg has been doing for years. But we go to direct access and we can also change the tap tempo. So at the moment, the sound is on hi-hat closed. We can change that. We can change that into, say, a low tom. Or we can change that in, well, any of the drum sounds. So mid tom L. Or we can change it to, um, let's see, a Chinese cymbal. Tambourine.
and also on top of that we can also change the volume as well so now it's at its loudest and also the sound So there you go, and that is the um, tap tempo slash style reset. So it acts as a tap, tap tempo when the style isn't being played, and it also and it acts as you're resetting the style when the style is being played. So that is the reset slash tap tempo. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you, and that is like to get access to the GM and XG and GM2 voices. Now I've already um, showed you how to do that on the Genos, but I thought I'd show you on this as well, because as you can see on the sounds, we go to the sounds and we go to that little arrow there. And then we have our categories of voices like piano and E piano, organ, guitar, strings, brass, synth, etc. And you notice that there isn't a folder for GM and XG and GM2 voices. And also to add another thing, um, as well as the GM and XG and GM2 vo voices that I'm going to show you how to get access to, um, ever since the Tyros 3, sorry, yes, ever since the Tyros 3, we have the legacy folder. Now, the legacy folder, this is where you can get access to the older sounds from previous keyboard models such as like the Tyros 1, Tyros 2, PSR S950, 910, etc. Um, you've, you'll get the older sounds in the um, legacy folder here. So that's the legacy folder in which you can get access to the older sounds. So now, yes, um, as you can see, you can't get access to the GM and XG and GM2 voices via the sounds. However, you can get access to them by the, um, the style backings and MIDI files. So I'll show that to you quickly. So here's this style. And then I press any one of these style channels, go to the sounds. And immediately, there you go, you can see GM and XG and GM2 voices. So we can actually change the style channel to, say, one of the XG voices. Or GM2. So that's how you get, um, so you can revoice um, the style channels using mid um, using the XG, GM and XG and GM2 voices. So you can get access to the GM and XG and GM2 voices that way. And also as well as MIDI files. So let's take this one for example. Go to channel and we're going to change one of the um, sounds. So let's just take um, the harp sound, for instance. There we go. GM and XG and GM2. We can revoice the MIDI file channels using GM and XG and GM2 voices. So yes, yeah, so you can revoice the styles and MIDI files using the GM and XG and GM2 voices, but you can't
get access to them via the voice categories. But there is a way to get to the GM and XG and GM2 voices and being able to play them on the PSI SX900. So I will show that to you. Okay, so I have a USB stick here. Um, basically what I did is that I took the GM and XG and GM2 voices from a Tyros keyboard. Like um, I still got the um, GM and XG and GM2 voices, which I took from my Tyros 4. Um, I showed you how to do that on my second Genos tutorial. So I'm gonna um, put the USB stick in the keyboard. So yeah, make sure you do that. Okay, so the D the USB device is connected. We go to user, USB 1. And there's my GM and XG and GM2 voice folders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy them over. And I'm going to copy them over to the user section of the keyboard. And there you go. There's the GM and XG and GM2 voices, and now you can play them on the keyboard. So they're not restricted to, they're not just restricted to like style channels for revoicing and MIDI files. So this is the only way in which you can get to the GM and XG and GM2 voices by copying them from another Tyros keyboard or one of the older PSRS keyboards. <laughs> And then some GM2 voices. So there you have it. And that is how you can get access to the GM and XG and GM2 voices by copying them from one of the um, Tyros keyboards, one to five, or any of the PSRS keyboards. So again, that's how you are able to get access to the GM and XG and GM2 voices on the Yamaha PSR SX900. And I believe it's the same also for the PSR SX700. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you is the playlist feature. Now the playlist feature was first on the Genos, which replaces the Tyros Music Finder. But on the Genos, I showed you that I showed you like how playlist works, and also I sh also showed you on the Genos that you can also add the Tyros Music Finder files into playlist. And basically, you put you put a Tyros Music Finder file on the Genos or PSI SX nine hundred and it converts them into registrations. Well, you can do the same thing on the SX900. So, and I've, I've already showed that on the Genos, so I won't show that because you can do exactly the same on the SX900. But what I will do is show you how to create your own playlist. That's something I haven't done on the Genos. So we just go to playlist and there's the preset playlist. That you um, that is already factory built onto the keyboard, and now we want to add our own playlist. So we just press new. It says a new a new playlist will be created. Continue. We shall continue. And then what we can do is that we can add our registrations onto that playlist. There you go. You can see my registration memories there. <laughs> that also gives you a rough idea of what songs I'll be um, uploading soon on YouTube. So we're going to select the um, select our registrations and we're going to hit add to playlist. So all our stuff, all our registrations are added onto your very own playlist. So yes, as you can see, those are songs that I've learned on this keyboard and they will be on YouTube soon, sometime next month. And now once you're happy with everything, we're just going to save that playlist. We are going to save here. Um, I'm just going to call this one. I'm going to call this one my song covers. 
but you can call your playlist anything you want. Just like like on the Genos, I've, I've learned a lot of 80s songs on the Genos. I decided to create a playlist with all the 80s songs that I've um, learned, and I've called the um, playlist Back to the 80s. But this for this example, I'm gonna I've saved my registration memories and I'm going to save this playlist as my song covers. So there you go. And that's your playlist created. So there's the preset playlist. And this is the playlist we've created, which brings up the um, registrations that you saved on that playlist. So there you have it. And that is how you create your own playlist so that you've got your song covers in one playlist that you can so that you can toggle to the, with the song covers that you've done or any registrations you've done for that matter so again that is how you create your own playlist okay so now the next thing that i want to show you and that is midi recording um quick and multi recording so first of all i'm going to show the midi quick recording so we're going to do our setup you know our sounds and styles that we want to record so we'll take that one for instance um. so yeah we'll take that and then we go to menu and then we're going to go to song recording and from here we are going to select quick recording and now the keyboard waits for us to start playing the keyboard which is what I'm going to do now And then once we're done, we can stop and we can play that back. Okay, and then once we're happy with our recording, we can save it. We just go to save, save here, and I'm going to call this one Q recording example. The Q means quick, as in a quick record example. So, so I'm just going to name my recording. So there you go, quick recording example, MIDI. Go to OK. And that's our song saved. There you go, quick recording example, MIDI. So there you go. And that is how you do MIDI quick recording. Okay, so now I'm going to show you MIDI recording multi. So you can do like multi recordings. So like you want to add some extra sounds or extra backings with your recording. So I'll show that to you. But first I'm going to select the sound and star that I want because I'm gonna do two examples. I'm gonna do it with a star backing and one of them um, to make your own song completely from scratch. So now we're gonna, we um, selected a style, and now we selected our sound, and then we're gonna go to menu, and we're gonna go to song recording, but this time go to MIDI multi-recording. 
So here is our setting to um, create a MIDI multi-recording. So channels 9 to 16 are basically the rhythm styles, all the channels from the rhythm channels. And the other eight, um, well, one of them is um, the main main voice. Um, yeah, the um, right hand voice, one, two, and three. And four is left. And five to eight are the each of the multi-pad buttons. But you can alter that any way you want. So here's an example. So I'm going to start recording. So here we go. We're going to do our MIDI multi-recording. So that's that recorded. So we just play that back. So we'll stop that and now we want to add something else. So with the recording you hold Yes it you 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 um you press that on any one of the channels that are not recorded and you can either either choose it for a right one, left, right two, right three, or multi pad and for the um rhythms as well. So you can do it any way, but yes yeah, so as I said one, two, and three is right hand voice, one, two, and three. Four is the left hand. Five to eight is the four multipads. And nine to 16 are the um, rhythm backings if you're playing in a style, which is what I've done here. So we're just gonna hold, we're just gonna press this and we're going to select right one again. So we're gonna record something on right one. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, um, we'll just stop that so that we can, um, we're going to choose another sound. So maybe this time we'll select a um, electric guitar. Yes, that that would that would do. And then we just do that. Hold then press that button um, icon. Right one. And then we just press play to start recording. There we go, we got that recorded. So now we play that back. Okay, so now you get the idea and I'm gonna do one more example with the um, MIDI multi recording when playing back a style. Uh, we're going to find another sound. Um, let's do... Um, Let's just find a sound. We're going to try to find a, there we go. We're going to do a harp sound. We'll do that sound. We'll do that again. Right one. Yeah, oh, um, hang on, what have I done?
that's it, we need to do that, that's it. And then we play and start um, doing an extra backing. And now we've got that recorded, now we can play back our multi-recording. Okay, so now we've got that um, our little um, multi-recording recorded using a style. So once you're happy with everything, we're just going to save that. We're going to call this one. Uh, what did I call the other one? Ah, yeah. So we're going to call this one multi-record example MIDI. multi-record example MIDI okay and there you go our song has been saved and we can play that back So that's the this is the MIDI multi record using a style. Okay, and now that um, now that we've um, recorded a song, um, a MIDI multi recording using a style, but now we're not going to use a style. We are going to record a song completely from scratch. So we just go back to the menu. We go to um, song recording, multi recording. And then we select new this time for a new song. Uh, we're not going to use any styles whatsoever. So first of all, what I'm going to do is going to yeah, record this one. Um, it can be right, one, two, three, left or multi-pad, or it could be any of the um, rhythms, but we're not going to um, do the rhythms this time. So we're on the right one that we want, but not that sound. Um, first of all, we are going to um, select a drum kit. So we're just going to find a drum kit. Sorry, just bear with me whilst I find a um, drum kit. But maybe this. Yeah, we'll just we'll just take that one for instance. And we just press record. Oh, we better better do the metronome. And we're gonna put the tempo up. There we go. And we just press record and start playing once you're ready.
Okay, we've got our first one recorded. And now we want to do the second channel. Yep, right, we're going to select right one. And we're going to select, this time, a bass sound. So... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. But that's okay, we can just record that back. Before I record, I'm just going to... Something like that. And then we're going to press record. Yep, select that one. And now the keyboard waits for us to play. And now we've got our bass recorded. So now our backing sounds more like this. So we're basically adding to our song that we're going to um, play completely from, record completely from scratch. So now we're going to, yep, that's it. We're going to select channel number three. Before we record on that, we're going to find a sound that we want. So maybe. Yeah, something like that. We're going to do a, um, a suitcase piano. Oh, so we're going to, yep, yeah, right one. Then we're going to press play and start recording an extra backing. <laughs> And now we've got that recorded. Okay, now we've got the drums, bass, and the suitcase piano um, recorded. And now we're going to do a couple more examples. So we're going to select number four this time. Um, again, to make things easier, we're just going to select right one. Okay, uh, what should we do this time? Maybe we should do, um, we'll do some strings. So maybe, let's see here, we're gonna find a string sound. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay, and then we just press that again, right one, then once you're ready, start playing. So we're just gonna press start stop to start playing. Okay, now we got that recorded. We'll stop that. And now we're going to do something else. We're going to do one more example. So yes, out of the five tracks we're going to record, you can record a total of up to 16 with the onboard 16 track sequencer. So now what we're going to do, we're going to choose number five as our last example. Uh, we're not going to record yet. Uh, we're going to find a sound first. So maybe... Uh, Maybe we choose a synth sound. We're just going to find which one. Yeah, we, we choose that sound. Okay, and then we just press record. Uh, yep, select number five, right one. 
and the keyboard waits for us to start playing. So here we go. <laughs> And then press stop once you're... And here we go, five tracks recorded, and here's what it sounds like now. Okay, so that's all, all done, and once you're happy with your recording of um, making a completely new, from, um, new song from scratch without using any styles, just the onboard sounds from the keyboard. And we just go to save, save here. And we're going to call this one. What did we call the last one? We called that one multi record example MIDI. We're going to call this one multi record example MIDI 2 because the first example was showing the style backings and the this one is showing on how to complete um how to record a a song completely from scratch so we're going to call this one multi record multi record oh, example midi 2 And there we go. So we have multi-record example MIDI, which I showed the style and adding extra backings. And here we have multi-recording example MIDI 2, in which we didn't use any star backings. We created something completely from scratch. So there you go. And that is the MIDI recording, multi-recording in which I showed an example of the um, styles and making a new song completely from scratch. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the audio recording. So again, we're just going to do our setup. Um, let's see, what style? Well, we'll choose that style, for instance, and we'll choose... Uh, Hang on, we're just going to choose a style. There we go, we choose a guitar sound. And then we go to menu, song recording. And exactly the same way we do, we did the MIDI um, quick recording, but this time audio quick recording. Um, unfortunately with the audio recording, you can't do multi-recording on this keyboard via audio. You can do that on the Genos, however. But this one, you, you can only do quick audio recording. So, to start recording, you tap the play pause. So we're going to do that now. And now it's going to, now it's um, started recording.
and then we just press stop once we've finished recording. And from here, you can, um, if you go to the menu, which I've just done, you can also change the audio format. You can change it into WAV or MP3 at 128, 256 or 320 kilobytes per second. Um, so we're going, for this instance, we're going to select it as a WAV file. So we, we just play that back. Then once you're happy with it, we can check. We can um, change our storage priority, so we can change it to either our USB or user. But I think this has been saved onto the user. So there we go. Um, that's our audio saved. Um, it was automatically saved onto the user. Um, what we're going to do now? We're just going to rename that. And we're going to call it, we are going to call it audio record example. There we go. Audio record example. OK, and then that's our audio track saved. Oh, oh sorry, wrong one. I, was, I pressed the MIDI. It was audio I was meant to do. So that's our audio, and if you want to either move it or copy it onto a USB stick, you can. Whenever you want to um, put it onto your computer, or and then eventually put it on a CD, so that's possible. So there you go, and that is how you do an audio um, audio record. There's only, there's only audio quick record. There's no multi-record for the audio on this keyboard. But there is audio multi-record on the Genos and the Tyros keyboards. So, all together with the song recording, that is how you do MIDI quick recording, MIDI multi-recording, and audio recording. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you is the style creator in which you can create your very own styles so you're not just restricted to the keyboard's built-in styles so what we do is that we go to menu um, menu page 2 and from here we go to style creator and this is where we can create your own styles so at the moment it's on like one of the built-in styles because you can also change the built-in styles as well but we're not going to do that so what we're going to do is that we're going to press initialize style and there we go 
as you can see, no buttons have lit up here except for main A. So now we can create our very own style. So first of all, what we're going to do is that we're going to change the pattern length to number four, and we're going to change the tempo to 135. And um, for this example, I am going to create a style for variation A and fill in A. And I'm gonna sort of uh, do a, a modern dance style for a change. So we go to record channel. And as you can see, the drum parts is ready to be recorded. So what we're gonna do is that I'm going to change that drum kit. So we're gonna change it into this one. I'm gonna change it into an EDM kit. And then we just turn on the metronome, sync start, and now the keyboard waits for us to start playing. So here we go. And now we've got that recorded. We and you can hear that it's not in perfect timing. So what we do is that we're going to quantize it. So it's in perfect timing. And we're going to quantize it into a sixteenth because that's the most common quantized setting. So and then we're going to press execute. Oh yeah, some sometimes it can be a bit. So if, if, if that happens, if that happens, just delete your recording and start again. Sometimes it does go a bit funny with the quantize, but that's okay. All you, all you do is just start over again. So we're going to do that again. There you go, it does sound better. And we're gonna go quantize, execute. There you go, that's better. That's in perfect timing. And now what we're going to do, um, we are going to select bass. We're going to record a bass. So I'm going to select a synth bass. So how about a DX100 bass? So then once you're ready, metronome, sync start, and now the keyboard waits for us to start playing. Okay, so it's an octave higher, but that's okay. And um, we're just gonna quantize that. And now we've got our drums and bass set up. And now we're going, oh, and another thing about the bass is that sometimes when playing the bass, some notes might sound an octave higher in some chords. So to make the bass, so for best results, we should change the high key parameter to either E or E flat. So we do that via the SFF edit. We're gonna to go to high key note limit and we're going to change the high key perimeter. Well, it's already done it. Um, it's either E or E flat, but it looks like it's already on there. So that's fine. And now we're going to select chord. So we're gonna record our chord next. Select a sound for this instance. There we go, we're going to select this sound. And then what we do, metronome, sync start, and now the keyboard waits for us to play. Yes, another, another thing, as you can hear that I wasn't playing it in C, I was playing it in E minor. Um, when you're creating a style and you play it in E minor, that is the best result. You, you will hear that once the style is complete and you can start playing around with different chords. And now for the, we're going to quantize that. Okay, that's in perfect timing. 
and also with the um like the called one called two and pad channels um you need yeah pl play it in e minor for the best result and then we're going to go to sff edit and we're going to change the um we're going to change the ntr perimeter to root fixed so it's on root transpose at the moment we're going to change it into root fix and the ntt type um we'll leave it as it is because we want it as a chord so ntr type root fixed ntt type chord so now we've done that we're going to do one more for the main variation and um, variation a we are going to record a pad sound So we're going to find a pad sound. There we go. We're going to choose that one. Metronome, sync starts, and other keyboard waits for us to start playing. And now we quantize that. And again, we're going to go to the SFF edit and we're going to change the NTR type to root fixed and leave the NTT type as chord. And now that's our main variation A completed. And now we're going to um, go to basic again and we are going to record a fill in. So fill in A. I also want to show you something with the um, fill in recording, which I will show you after I do the drum bit. So we're going to change our drum kit. We're going to change it into this here EDM kit again. And then again, metronome, sync start. And now the keyboard waits for us to start playing. Channel edit, quantize. Okay, yep. That's in perfect timing. And now we're going to add something else for our filling. We're going to add something like, so I'll do that. Again, channel edit, quantize. There you go, perfect timing. Yes, thank goodness we have the um, quantize um, feature because when you're creating the style yourself and playing the notes, it's not always gonna be in perfect timing. So quantizing is a lifesaver on this keyboard. And now, now that we've done the um, drum bits for the fill-in, I want to show you something else. Um, there was either, um, I'm not sure how many people on YouTube, but either one or two people on YouTube has asked me, um, how do you add a crash symbol at the end of a filling? Well, to do that is, um, there's an easier way to do this than to try and do it yourself when recording it. So I'll show that to you. So we're gonna go to step edit, and this is our drums. So the step edit is where we can like alter our notes and touch sensitivity. Um, so, so in order to um, add a crash symbol to our at the end of the filling, um, the best way to do it is go to the last note, which is what I've done here, and then we're going to go to insert, which basically there you go. It it just copied the last note, and just go to the notes here and if hopefully you can see but whenever I press the keys the notes change on the step edit um, all you just got to do is hit the crash symbol so yes and also to have the to have the um, filling at the end I'm sorry to have the crash symbol play at the end of the filling and also, um, the best way to do that is also 
as you can see here, those are the the timers of the um, notes that are being played. We're going to change the time here. We're going to change that into 1900 or 1900. And now that I've done that, there we go. We just get out of step edit. And now we've got a crash symbol added for the very end of the filling. So now it sounds like this. So that's how you add a crash symbol at the very end of the filling. Now we're going to record our base for the filling. We're going to do the exact thing as before, but as it's a filling, it's going to be shorter. So DX100 base, metronome. Well, actually, you don't need a metronome. Now that we've got a drum part, we can keep in time. So here we go. We're going to channel edit, quantize, and that should be in time. And go to SFF edit, make sure the high key, yes, make sure that the um, high key parameter is set to either E or E flat, which it is. And now we're going to record our chord. Same thing as before. We're going to use this sound. Again, play in E minor for the best result. Sync start and play away. Channel edit, quantize. And go back to record channel. Go to pad. Oh, hang on. Uh, what have I... Uh, Oh yes, I better not forget to do that. There you go, root fixed, closed. I also want to go back to main A because I might have forgot to do that for the pad. You know, things like that is easy to forget sometimes. So SFF edit. Oh no, it's on root fix. So now we've remembered that. So let's just go back to basic, fit in A, record channel. We're going to select a pad. Select a pad sound. Yep, it's exactly what I want. And we can start playing once you're ready. Channel edit, quantize. And then we're going to go to SFF edit and change the NTR parameter to root fixed and chord but it's, um, it's at called anyway automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. So now we've got our main filling. I'm sorry, we've got our main variation. And filling A done. We've added crash symbol at the end of the filling. So once you're happy with everything, we just go to save. We're gonna save here, and we are going to call it Style creator example. Style creator example and OK. And now there's our newly created style. And now we can have some fun by playing different chords. So that's our style done. We've done variation A and filling A. Okay, so now the next bit for the, the style creator is that as you can hear, some bits can be quite loud or some can be quiet. So before we save the style again with the same name, 
we're going to change the volume. So we're going to go to the mixer and we're going to go and select the style. And there we go. We can change the volumes of the style parts. So here we go. When you, when you do that, it automatically changes the volume of the fill-in. Okay, so we, uh, we changed the volume of the parts we recorded. We just go back to Style Creator. Do nothing, just hit save. Save here, okay. Yes, the name already exists, but we want to continue. And now, if we go to another style and go back to our style, it should, there we go. Let's go back to that. And there we go. It saves the, the um, volume of each part we've altered. But what if I want the fill-in to have a somewhat different volume? So I think of what we, we go to, we go to Style Creator and we go to Mixer. And this is where we can change the um, volume. So let's say, let's make this one higher and maybe make the drums higher. and perhaps make the, the um, pad higher. There we go. And then we just save it. Save here, okay. So now, there we go. So the, um, so the main variation is like that. And when I press fill in, the sliders change because I've changed the volume. And then from here, we can also have like different effects. We can change our DSP effects of the style as well. So we have the variation effect and insertion effect in which we can change. So let's see here, um, what should we change? Oh yes, from here, we can also change the um, parameters of the reverb. So we got the drums. Or the bass. But we can also change the reverb types. Yeah, we can change the reverb types. We can change the chorus types and the parameters of um, for each channel. Effect, we can change that. Oh, so where's that? Variation effect. So let's just try something. So I'll, I'll just try something here. So let's change bass. Right. Oh, there you go. Go, um, go to variation effects and type in insertion in which you can change each part into any DSP effect.
So yeah, you can just um, like then mess around with the variation effect, and you can add DSP parts as well for each channel. So, so there you go. So there we go. Change it into system. Um, then we got. There you go. So there you go, and then once you're happy with, um, there we go. Choose, we're going to choose tempo delay for that part, and we're going to go back to style creator, and we're not going to do anything. We're just going to save that, save here, okay, and yep. So now we've um, created our style, changed the volumes for um, the main A and fill in, and we've also changed a DSP effect on one of the parts. There we go. So there you have it. And that is the style creator in which you can create your very own styles and also the mixer to change the volumes for each part of the style. And you can also add different effects for each part as well. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you and that is the chord looper in which you can record your own different chord progressions now the chord looper was something that was new in the PSR SX900 the Genos didn't feature chord looper when it was first launched over two years ago but now with the new firmware update version 2.0 for Genos the Genos now has chord looper so now I'm going to show that to you the chord looper um, the chord looper is useful when you want to use two hands to play melodies on your right hand whilst the chord looper does the rest with the styles via the chord progressions so I'll show it to you we just press direct access and go to chord looper and we and from here we can record up to eight different chord progressions per chord looper bank so first of all we're going to select a style before we do any of that um, so we're going to choose this style And then we just go, we just press record and we start recording our um, chord progression. Okay, so now that we've done that, we just press memory. And it says select the chord looper memory number to memorize the data. So we're going to select that one as number one. So now we've got our chord progression saved. So we now the, we turn on the um, chord looper. And the chord progression I've done will automatically be memorized. And then we'll record and we're going to add another chord progression. So we just press record again and start playing. Again, we press memory and press either one to eight of the chord progression. So that's our second chord progression done. We'll, we'll play that back. A 
and I'm going to do one more example of the chord looper. I'm going to record one more chord progression, although you can save up to eight per chord looper bank. So we're going to start. Oh, sorry. Then we're going to press record. There we go. Um, of the chord looper. And then start playing when we're ready. And then we press memory, save it to number three. And there you go. That's my other chord progression saved. Oh, we've got to play that back. There we go. And then once you're happy with your chord looper and chord progressions, we're going to go to save. As you can see, I've already um, done some chord um, progressions with chord looper for a couple of songs. Um, we're going to go to save here and we're going to call this one we're going to call it chord looper example because this is an example on how the chord looper works. Chord looper example. And now we're going to press OK. And that's our chord looper saved. So now with the um, chord looper, we can now um, yes, we can now um, use our two hands freely for the um, right hand. So here we go. So yeah, that's, that's just an example. I know it's not perfect, but it's just an example that you can now use your two hands freely to do anything you want within the keyboard whilst the chord looper plays back the chord progressions you recorded. And a good thing about chord looper is that it's not just restricted to that one rhythm. You can also choose any different style and the um, chord looper will still remain the same. So let's go back to the chord looper, change our chord progressions. So I chose a different style, same chord progressions. And we can also change the variations as well. So. So there you go, and that is the chord looper feature in which you can record up to eight different chord progressions per chord looper bank, which, which is really useful when you want to use your two hands free to play melodies throughout the entire keyboard, while the chord looper plays back your recorded chord progressions. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to show you, and that is Bluetooth connectivity. 
Now this is something that the Genos doesn't feature. Now with the Bluetooth, you can um, connect any Bluetooth device such as your iPhone, Android, iPad or any other tablet etc. So there's the um, there's my iPad. So then there's my iPad. And then what we go what we do is that we go to the menu on the keyboard and we're going to select Bluetooth. And then from here we go to the settings on the iPad. And then from here we are going to press pairing. So we press pairing. And then with the iPad. There we go. As on the iPad you can see PSI SX900. We just press that on the iPad. And there we go. On the um, SX900 it says it's connected. It's connected to my iPad. So now what I'm going to do is go back to the iPad. The two devices are connected together. We're going to go to the iPad. And now basically what this does is that um, the PSI SX900 are your speakers. So if you watch videos on YouTube or you're listening to music, all that will come out from the keyboard speakers. So I'm just going to go on YouTube and there's, there's my channel. I'm just going to um, select any one of my videos. It doesn't matter what one. Um, this is just going to be an example. We just turn that. There we go. Another thing I want to show you. In order to get the sound effects on the keyboard, you have to put the trans... See, the video's audio is coming from the keyboard speakers. So we can do anything. We can like watch videos on YouTube and the audio comes out from the keyboard speakers. And the... Um, and also the... Um, when you're listening to music, again, the music will come out from the keyboard speakers. So it cuts the speakers from your iPad, iPhone or any other um, Bluetooth device. It cuts the speakers from those devices and will come out from the keyboard speakers. Pose up to 24. We'll watch another video. So there you go, um, the Bluetooth device, which is very useful. Um, yeah, the, the Bluetooth feature is a very useful feature so that you can pair your device with the keyboard and listen to music and watch videos and the audio comes from the keyboard speakers. So there you go. And that is the Bluetooth connectivity in which you can connect your devices such as your iPhone, iPad or any Android device to the keyboard so the keyboard acts as your speakers. In other words, also acts as an, a, um, a wireless auxiliary output. Okay, so now the next thing I want to show you, and that is the multipad creator, in which we can make our own multipads. So we just go to menu here, menu page two, and then we go to multipad creator, MIDI multipad recording. And we're going to select new, so we've got a new multi-pad. So we're going to, um, at first, we're going to do... Um, we're going to do a couple of drum one-shots. So we're going to select a drum kit. So we choose that one. So... so. Yeah, we'll do something like that. Um, we're just going to do, um, at first, we're going to record number one. Yeah, so. So we're just going to record that, just as a little one loop. So now we've got that multi-pad. And now we're going to record a second multipad and we're going to do something like yeah so we just record that
and we can either choose to repeat them or not. So. And now for an, and one more, we're going to do a multi, we're going to um, do a chord. So we're going to select our sound. Let's see. Maybe we do, we do, we do an organ sound. Just going to find a suitable organ sound. Yeah, it doesn't matter really which one I select. Um, this is just an example of the multi-pad creator. And then we just we turn on the metronome this time. And then record our phrase. And now we've got our multi-pad phrase recorded. And yes, we're going to have that repeated. So. Okay. And now this one, we're going to do a chord match. So we have chord match on. So whatever chords I play with the um, left hand, it will match the chords. So once you're happy with everything, we just go to save and I'm going to call this one MPAD Creator Example. So there we go, MultiPad Creator Example. OK, and now our multipad is saved. Although you can do four multipads, I've done three for, for this example. Then we just go to the multipad, and there you go, that's our created multipad. So there you go, and that is the multipad creator in which you can record and create your own multipads. Okay, so now the next thing I want to show you in relation to the um, multipad recording, and that is the multipad audio link. Um, now, what I've done, oh uh, yeah, with the uh, multipad audio link where you can add WAV files to your multipads. Um, but what I did is that I recorded a couple of um just a quick couple of quick performances on this keyboard and I recorded it as a WAV file so that you can include it with the um, multi-pad buttons here. Before you record a WAV file yourself, so you don't, you don't just have to like, use any WAV file, well you can, but you can also record your own WAV files and put it onto the multi-pad audio link. But before you do that, make sure you put the, um, make sure you put the, um, sample rate onto I believe is 44.1 kilohertz I think and make sure the bit length is 16 bits so I've already done that and I've also I've also put them on a USB stick so now the USB stick is in my keyboard so what I'm going to do is to go to menu go to multi-pad creator and instead go to multi-pad audio link and that's telling me audio data cannot be linked to a MIDI multipad. Do you want to create a new audio link multipad bank? We say OK. 
and then we can choose four WAV files here. Um, I've done two for this example. So here we go. We just go on to the USB. And then from here, we I renamed them on my computer. We have Audio Link Example 1 and Audio Link Example 2. So we're going to select this one. And now we've got this as our audio link. Okay, and now we do. Well, now we're going to select um, number two, and we're going to select audio link example two. So now we've got our audio links with the multi-pad. So here's the first one. And here's the second one. So that's our WAV files via the, um, by the um, audio link. So once you're happy with everything, we're going to go hit save, save here. And we're going to call this one, we're just going to call this one audio link example because it's an example on how to put WAV files via multipad audio link. Oh, oh audio bank, I meant audio link example. Oh, sorry about that. So there we go, audio link example. Okay, and now that's our multipad audio link saved. So we just go to, there we go, audio link example. So there's the first one. Oh, and um, another good thing is, um, I know that on previous keyboards you can only play um, one audio link bank at a time. But now you can play as many. Yeah, now, you, now you can play them all. So yeah, that's the first one. And here's the second one. And now we can play them together. I know they don't sound well together, but it's just an example that you can play more than one audio link bank um, on the multi pads. Um, so you can do it like play multiples at the same time. So like before, you can only play one multi pad audio link at a time, but now you can. Play up to um, full. So there you go, and that is the multipad audio link in which you can add WAV files to your multipads. And as I've said before, um, now you can play more than one at the same time. So that is multipad audio link. Okay, so now the last thing that I want to show you on this tutorial of the Yamaha PSR SX900 keyboard and that is to install expansion packs. Now when you first buy the PSR SX900 and SX700 um, we already have four pre-built expansion packs on this keyboard. We have the African pack, the Europe pack, Latin America and Oriental packs that will come with the keyboard when you first buy it. Now, in order to install your expansion packs, and before you can do that, um, we just go to menu, and menu, yeah, menu page two, and we're gonna go to expansion, and we need to export the instrument info 
onto a USB stick. So that's what we'll be doing. So we go to export instrument info. It says execute exporting, connect a USB flash drive, which is what we've done. Starting the operation will stop the playback of the song and other data. So we go to OK. And now it's exporting our instrument info onto a USB stick. Exporting has been completed. It has been saved as the file name, which will show up on your computer, to the root directory of the USB flash drive. So now we go out of that. And now we go onto our computer, put the USB stick in our computer and open up Yamaha Expansion Manager, in which we will use to install expansion packs on this keyboard. You can get expansion packs from www.yamahamusicsoft.com or any other websites you know that have expansion packs on there and you can install them onto the keyboard. Now unfortunately, um, just like with the Genos, unfortunately you can't you can't um, install expansion packs wirelessly like you can on the Genos because on the Genos, on the, on the menu here, you have um, the Wi-Fi in which you can connect your Wi-Fi and install expansion packs and export your instrument info wirelessly onto Expansion Manager. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Yamaha Expansion Manager. Okay, so now we're on our computer and we are on Yamaha Expansion Manager. And now, before you install expansion packs, go to, hopefully you can see it here. Um, yeah, as you can see, that's um, my Genos. And here we go to this arrow here, and we're going to select, yeah, with the install target, we're going to go to import instrument info. Now make sure your USB stick is connected before that's it, and then we have the PSI SX900 instrument info. We're going to open that. And now it's importing the instrument's data. And there we go, we have on here PSI SX900. So now it's just loading the instrument's data. And there we go. Um, we're not going to um, choose all the expansion packs, so we're going to untick the ones we don't we don't want. So there's um, most of the expansion packs here for like the Genos, just like this one, the um, Genos Superior pack. So for this example, so yeah, we are going to. So yeah, we're going to untick them. Some some of them may take a bit of time. Yes, I didn't tick I didn't untick the church and Christmas pack because that's one of the packs I will be um, installing for this example. I'm also going to install Eurodance and Entertainer packs. Now these are the expansion packs I had for my PSI S970 when I had that keyboard, but I don't have that keyboard now because I've sold it along with my PSI S670 to get the PSI SX900. Okay, so we got the Entertainer pack ticked the Eurodance ticked and the Church and Christmas pack ticked. Um, these are the expansion packs that I'm going to be installing on my PSR SX900. So once you're happy with the packs that you want to install on your keyboard, we just go on the top right here, hopefully you can see the mouse, um, save as pack install. Yeah, save as pack install data. We're going to save it onto the USB stick and then what that does, we're going to hit save. It says complete installation may not be possible if there's not enough space available. But I'm sure there is a lot. Of, I'm sure there is um, enough space on my USB stick. So we click OK. And then what that does is that it's installing the three packs I chose into one big pack. So Church and Christmas, Eurodance and Entertainer packs will be, in, will be saved as one whole pack. So depending on how many expansion packs you choose to install, um, this may be quick or it might be, 
it might be um, longer, depending on how many packs you choose. So it's now saving the pack installation file. Well, at the moment, it's making the pack. See, this can take some time. So, so yes, I think um, I will speed up the video on this point. And there you go, the pack installation file has been created. Formatting the installation of pack data on an instrument can take about 20 minutes. Please wait until formatting has finished before turning off the instrument. So, okay. So that's our expansion packs installed into one big pack onto a USB stick. And now we go back onto the PSR SX900 and install it on the keyboard. Oh, and just another pointer. Um, you do the same way of installing expansion packs. You, um, the same thing how I did it. The same thing goes to um, the way to install expansion packs. You do it on the Tyros 5, the PSR S770 and S775, PSR S970 and S975, and the Genos, and also this PSR SX900 and SX700. Okay, so now we're back on the keyboard. And we are going to install the expansion packs that we put on a USB stick via Yamaha Expansion Manager. So here's my USB stick and I'm going to put that in the keyboard. There we go, the USB device is connected. We're going to go back to Menu, Expansion, and this time we're going to select Pack Installation. So there you are, there's the PSR SX900 pack install data, which is um, which has got Church and Christmas pack, Eurodance pack and Entertainer pack, all in one pack. So we're going to select that one, and it says here, save all the data currently being edited before starting. The data will be lost if you start installation, installing without saving it. And um, also, any expansion packs that are on the keyboard already will be deleted and will re and will be replaced with the pack you're about to install. So we're going to hit OK. And and there we go. And it says here all the expansion contents will be deleted. Continue. And we just press OK. So as I said, any um, expansion packs that are already on the keyboard will be deleted and will be replaced with the pack you're about to install. So now it's executing. This again, this might take some time depending on how many packs you got on the um, pack you're about to install. So it's just executing now. Okay, so we're nearly there. And there we go, there you go, it, it took a little bit longer than I thought, but here we go. Um, installation has been completed, the instrument will be restarted.
So we press OK. And now the keyboard will be restarted. And there we go. And then we go to the expansion slash user. And there's our packs, Eurodance, Entertainer and Church and Christmas. Although it says S970 because I um, downloaded it for the uh, PSI S970. So here we have the Eurodance. Entertainer. and church in Christmas. As well as, as well as some sounds from the packs. Entertainer. and Church and Christmas. So there you go. And that is how you install expansion packs on your Yamaha PSR SX900 keyboard. Um, you also do the same method when you want to install packs for your Tyros 5, PSR S770 and S775, PSR S970 and S975, and PSR SX 700. Okay, so this is now the end of this tutorial of the Yamaha PSR SX 900 keyboard. I do hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and that you have found it useful. And um, as you can see then on the SX 900, there were some new features that were not found on Genos, such as um, Cord Looper, Bluetooth connectivity and the, the, the style reset button but ever since the um, new firmware for the Genos version 2.0 was launched um, that was also in November last year um, yes ever since that the Genos now has cord looper and style reset um, yeah the only thing that Genos doesn't have is the um, Bluetooth connectivity which this keyboard has but again I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial of this keyboard so please do write back to me and tell me what you think. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.